Hello, hello, and welcome to the stage season two. It's now season one, stage two. Season one, stage two. My bad, sorry. Of the Overwatch Community Cup. Yep, we are here. We are going to be watching the Houston In-Laws versus the San Francisco Shook. Houston In-Laws ended up uh, top four last stage. San Francisco bottom four. So we'll see how the new rosters and uh, all the off time has treated these teams. The disembodied voice you're hearing right now is me, Astro. We are trying out a more distant commentary just due to commentary circumstances. Yep, we will get a camera feed for Astro at some point, but today you have just my beautiful face. Although we do hopefully bring to you some improved mic quality over some past games. Yep. Now... And we'll also be seeing, now, the, the, the game itself. I really don't know how it's going to go. Because Houston did finish well, but we've seen a lot of shakeups in these teams. Absolutely. It's, there's a lot different... as we head in to Eichenwald. Definitely an interesting choice for a first map. Eichenwald used to be so heavily uh, defendable, given the first and uh, entering the third phase choke points, but a lot has changed since then. So there's definitely going mm -hmm. to be uh, more chances for the offense. But and you've got to wonder with the prevalence of Brigitte too, how death ball comps are going to work on this map. Yep, speaking of changes, Brigitte and Hanzo are the big ones. Hanzo's arrow changes, the removal of Scatter, and the introduction of almost a more devastating ability is definitely going to shake up the meta a bit if we see him. And Brigitte has been strong since she released. Yeah, she's been absolutely unstoppable. And it looks like uh, for the San Francisco Shook, Dread is going to be on that Brigitte. They're also going to be running a Farah Mercy. Farah is very counter meta this season. She's very good at countering both Brigitte and Hanzo, despite how even... Uh, the fact that Hanzo's arrows are faster, she still has a good chance since Hanzo's still not hit scan. And if we take a look at the in-laws uh, roster right now, we have a Hanzo, we have a Zenyatta, and that's all that we have. Everyone else is close to melee range. Yeah, this is the meta, though. This is what we see from high-level play, is these three supports, these two tanks, and a Hanzo. One of the only th ways to get rid of Brigitte's armor after ult is a grav uh, dragon strike. So this mm -hmm. is actually pretty typical. Uh, what is not typical is a Orisa Hog on attack. True. And also, I don't know how well the soldier's going to help with all that armor. Each one of those shots is going to be knocked down by quite a bit. Yeah, it's going to be about half damage. But they are rolling up. They're sending up their shields. I'm just not sure Dread is going to have the positioning with these tanks. Yeah. I think Six is game plan right here is definitely to uh, whittle down that Rhine shield. But you've got the bears from Zarya. So you need to wonder how well that's going to work out. Yep, but we do see Akane already going around the statue, but picks are already coming in from uh, the in-laws. Alto, Sax, and Kawaii Street already down. Akane needs to get out. Without a Mercy, that's not a lot of healing he's going to get, but he does finish off Admiral, so maybe this is a chance for San Francisco to turn this around. Storm yeah, Arrow is really down. Big Really big pick on the Zarya, on the Zarya right there. It could allow um, the, sh the Shook to get in somewhat. Really good hooks coming in from Sixes. Yeah, they're getting a couple picks here and there, and with the spawn advantage, this might actually be enough. They're going to start pushing towards the point, and a nice uh, halt is going to pull them back in, but there's really not uh, much more damage coming out. And the other question is, even with all the armor we have coming out, even with the help from Brigitte, who is going to contest this damage-boosted Farah? Yep, that's one shot, that's another. Didn't even have to use ult, and that's going to actually be a cap for San Francisco in about, I would say, two whole pushes of time. It ended up being one very long push, but still, it was it was pretty solid. Yeah, and like you said, this Farah is super strong. Counter meta is coming in to be the meta with all these Brigitte's and Hanzo's. Yep. Speaking of, uh, North does have his Dragon Strike waiting on Admiral's Graviton Surge. That's not going to be uh, an option for San Francisco. They don't even have a Zenyatta uh, or any kind of defensive ult. So if they get grabbed, that's kind of it. But a or nice he hook. That, Zarya. that actually, Admiral is, might get out alive. That's wild that Admiral does make it out. But in laws do have to back out. Pokey yeah. is looking to get a Shatter. Oh, but he gets stunned! He doesn't get to get the Shatter off. That's super unfortunate for Pokey, as Brigitte is just so devastating towards Reinhardt. But here's the this grab. This could be the dragon? 
It kind of misses, but Pokey gets the damage done. How do you miss your dragon? I think it ended up past them. But in any case, uh, yeah. uh, it ended up working. They ended up actually getting Althosax's uh, Valkyrie as well. And now, Houston In-Laws is going to have the armor from Brigitte's ult. I really like this ult use. A lot of Brigitte's ult, like a lot of people tend to use it to do pushes, but it can be very well used as a support ult. Getting your team ready before a team fight. Yep, and now it's time for Sanfran to come in. Oh, Star Plus is already down. And armor is not really an issue when you do 120 damage per shot. That only takes down five of the damage. But Akane does need to get healed up. Where's his mercy? But here's a visor. And but my <laughs> damage was oh. Servia gets destroyed. Kawhi Street goes down next. Huge grenade. A res is going to come out, but Akane does get taken down as well thanks to a storm arrow. North is going to try and take down this mercy, and now he's in the back. This could be a very devastating dragon strike, but he's actually just going to. Do his normal shots, jump down, follow Alto Sax. That double jump that, that Hanzo has now is a really good movement ability. That Earth Shatter got the entire team down right there. Yeah, but now we're seeing a uh, much better showing from the in laws than we did initially. I'm here. I'm taking care mm -hmm. of you. The Shook have been able to make some decent progress, but the in laws have been really good about stopping their pushes. And the ultimate economy is definitely in favor uh, of Houston as well, especially when two go down already. Three, and now look it's clean up. Look at all these picks coming in from north. That new Hanzo's nothing to sneeze at. And the best part is, he's not even getting ult with these shots because he's had it and hasn't had to use it. Hmm. I'm surprised they're still keeping the Arisa Hog at this point. I know they want to do some barrier busting, but I feel like it's not really working out for them. Yeah, I definitely think that Ryan Zarya is the way to go. Oh, there's a grab. Oh, Here's the big. dragons. This should be it. No defensive ult. They're gonna go down. And that is a triple. Oh, baby. We're not gonna miss those dragons. And again, that's another Altosax uh, Valk that's just ended up wasted. They're using it as a defensive ult through this grab, but it's not enough healing. Yeah. Um, Mercy is not where she's at. You can't get that triple res anymore. The use of the Valkyrie, even as a counter after the grab, is kind of pointless. You would just end up having to go back to your team. Moving we have Akane behind everyone up here. Yeah, and he's got ult as well. He's probably going to try for something big. If he does cycle around, it could be go well. The problem, though, like is said, that in-laws have both support ults. That is true. And with the he armor, really... that's going to give Zen enough time to use that ult. I feel like Akane is trying to get some picks on the support. Ooh, so that he but he gets oh, picked. Never mind. <laughs> North is going to get that kill, and a big shatter is going to get a bunch of people. A nice headshot onto Serbia from North, and this is another cleanup. San Francisco can't get past this one bridge. Desperate rally, but that was not enough, and probably an ill-advised use of it at that time, too. Yeah, honestly, it is... Rally's probably best used like Surplus is now. It doesn't really do enough in the middle of a fight, maybe like near the beginning, but... I definitely yeah. prefer having that 150 armor on top of my health, as opposed to yep. going in with some healing. Rally's best use, I think, more like a transcendence and less like a sound barrier, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Now, North is trying to get these shots, but he's getting pushed away, but Trance is going to keep people alive, and Akane's been sitting on that ult for so long, and it netted nothing. Dragon's on the point. They're going to uh, get people away from the payload. Orisa goes down. Altosax gets caught in it. And now it's just Pokey swinging away. That's going to be a clean fight. And only and 20 seconds be... left. They do have a Reaper up top here. I don't really know if Servia is going to be able to get much. I think he's going to be waiting up top, just trying to see if he can contest if he needs to. Yeah, he'll at least get to do that, but it's probably not going to be enough. Especially if Surplus has anything to say about it. Never mind, Surplus gets Jeez. chased down. They need to get on this point. They have about five seconds left. All right, oh. three on. They have the presence. Valkyrie is out preemptively, so is Supercharger. And, and now is the time. Moves. This could be devastating if they could get the damage off, but the grab is going to stop the whole fight! That was healing for everybody, 50% damage boost for everybody, but they still weren't able to get any progress. As San Francisco is going to stop here at this bridge. Not just that, but I, if you saw in the beginning of that Valkyrie, oh, that was, wasn't even necessary. It missed the Mercy, but <laughs> she's still going to go down. Yeah, if you saw in the beginning of that, they had used Supercharger and Valkyrie. The damage boosts do stack, so that was 80% extra damage for the entire team. But unfortunately, everyone got stopped out 
by that grav, even with all the extra damage, it was going nowhere with such a limited sightline, and you're going to get a clean stop right there. Yeah, I don't know if, if it was the target calling or the positioning or the fact that Reaper was stuck on the high ground, but there was just really nothing gained from either of those ults. Not even a single pick, I think. No. But now we're going to be switching over to a Houston attack and a San Francisco defense. Hmm. I see Servia on the Bastion, and I feel like this might be stable. I'm pretty sure this isn't a meme pick. Yeah, with a Brigitte uh, adding extra armor and a Reinhardt barrier. And a Mercy to res you. Yeah, that could be terrifying. Definitely solid. Now, I don't know about sixes on the Winston. I Winston is very bad in this meta. It's we should talk about the meta and how Dive was the meta for Stage 1 of the Community mm -hmm. Cup. That's completely gone. Diva, it's Winston, de Tracer, Genji, they're all gone. It's Death Ball now, isn't it? Yeah, it's Death Ball, triple support... Uh, you might see a Lucio, but Zenyatta is the only staple that's going to stay uh, in the new meta. And I feel like in a pinch you might see a D.Va, because D.Va just has some general utility. Defense Matrix is still useful. Absolutely. But the issue with a Winston is that with the extra armor, you're going to be attacking with a Feather Duster. Yeah, with uh, attacking armor and is only 30 dam or what, 60 damage, he's only going to do 30 per second. Exactly, and that is not really anything to take... It's not going to take anyone down. I feel like they might have gone to Winston to get some picks on the supports while Bastion cleans up the rest. But if you have a Brigitte armoring everyone up, you're not going to get those picks. Now here comes the rollout. The Bastion does take Pokey down to half health, but they're still pushing forward. This Lucio's speed boost is giving them a lot of progress, and they've already gone around this uh, tower. Bastion is going to go down, but Pokey does as well. It is an even fight so far. Surplus is just swinging his flail around. But Altosax goes down next. This defense is already falling apart. Akane's gonna go down next. But North actually getting a Look bunch of kills. Picks. Storm, Storm arrow, arrow absolutely devastating. Quite a hurricane right there. And you said that the defense was good, but the thing is, the um, in-laws got such an early pick on the Bastion, which got rid of most of the DPS for the Shook. And at that point, the fight was almost won right off the bat. Yeah, and I'm still wondering what this Winston, what purpose he's trying to serve. Because he doesn't really make space in this kind of composition. He is it the bubble for the Bastion? Because you have a Rhine for that. I think it's just to hop into the enemy team and say hello there, and then just <laughs> and then get stunned feed and then shifted yeah. and then uh, charged. Now we yeah. see Servius actually switched off to the Sombra, which is an interesting pick. Yeah, Sombra sees a lot less playing this meta simply due to how useful Brigitte is. But if you can hack the Rhine Barrier, if you can get an EMP off on the speed boost. On the, sorry, on the, um, sound barrier that comes out. Yeah, that's so no defense. Still good. Now, Kawhi Street is going to find a charge onto Admiral, and he does have Shatter, but he gets bumped Whoa. and actually gets a 360. Gets a triple Shatter, but uh, his team is actually going to pick up on this. Dread getting a lot of picks. Transcend's going to get away, but Kawhi Street's going to get picked back up. North is fi uh, finished off, and that's actually a very solid hold. They need to have several more of those if they want to uh, even uh, would take this map, though. Yeah, it's definitely because an Because look battle. at the distance that's left. We have maybe, what, 10 meters? Yep, and here's the armor. And now the team is ready to go. And this is the reason why Sombra's falling off this meta, because you can't hack away armor. Yep. It's, you can hack Transcendence, EMP, I mean, uh, barriers, but not armor. Now, Charge does come out. Armor from both teams. But Sixes really does get brought back up. Also, that was a really good late delay on the um, sound barrier. Now, EMP did come out, but it doesn't look like it's accomplishing much as San Francisco is getting pushed back. Dread is almost down, does get finished off. Altusax needs to find a way out, but the in-laws are just pushing in. Now with Storm Arrow, Altusax is going to be finished off. Yes. And we can see the end right there. Only Winston on the point, but he's going to get picked right down. Akane has to jump down. But it's not going to be enough. Ryan could charge in, but I don't... Oh, never oh. mind! <laughs> and a there nice headshot onto Dread. Double headshots. Kind of 360 dragon arrow as they finish off the map. Yeah, it was looking like a, for a second there, like, um... Perhaps the Shook were st sort of getting their uh, holds together. But the second... Even after they changed their comps, right? The uh, in-laws adapted so fast. 
and they were able to clean up so brutally. Yeah, they didn't even adapt their comps. Houston in-laws just adapted their playstyle. Here we go. 17 storm arrow kills. That is a lot. More than any scatter arrow card. Uh, proportionally. Althosax doing as much healing as possible, but unfortunately the Valkyries aren't enough to keep people in a Graviton alive through Dragon Strike. New Hans is scary, man. Like, I honestly don't want to play against him. <laughs> yeah, he's terrifying, though I think I still prefer it to Scatter Arrow. I think... I do too. I think the Storm Arrow should be toned down a little bit. Maybe stick it to four arrows or lower the damage. But I definitely prefer Hanzo having to aim than whatever Scatter Arrow was. Oh, yeah. The thing is, this is... Storm Arrow is just as strong as Scatter was. Mm -hmm. It's just Scatter consistent. required all, yeah, it, yeah, Scatter required a lot less aiming, and Storm is not as consistent. The only people who are going to be consistent with Storm Arrow are the best Hanzos. Yeah, the ones that can isn't... actually click on heads. Yeah. Or click on a head as it is two seconds in the future. Yep. But Project back to w. this match between Houston and San Fran, as you said, we saw mm -hmm. San Francisco uh, get a little... Uh, footing at that choke point. They were starting to get their defenses together, but one big team fight ended up with Houston getting the win. So how do you think San Francisco is going to be able to break back into this fight? Well, they're going to need to, I'd say, play a little bit closer to meta. Mm -hmm. Or if they play off meta, get value out of those, those off meta picks. Like we saw Sombra coming in from San Fran. We saw Winston coming in. We saw Winston for that entire second map. That he really didn't accomplish much at all. Yeah, I I'm still not sure what the point of that was, because without any dive DPS or a D.Va, Winston doesn't really do anything on his own. He definitely doesn't do damage. You can say and that he you... goes off for supports, but he needs help. And if you wanted to have a dive tank, I could see playing the D.Va, because I could see value in using Defense Matrix to stop the Bastion Defense. Or I or not, not Bastion Defense. I could see Defense Matrix to stop some of your hit scan or your projectiles coming from Hanzo. I could see eating the Dragons. I could see eating the Grav. But Winston... Yeah. I don't know. And it was they were running two main tanks as well. So that really does eat into the amount of damage you can have on a team comp. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I agree with you. I think San Francisco should be running more standard comps. That's a theme we saw throughout all of Stage 1 of the Community Cup is people uh, running comfort, comfort picks, what they're used to playing on ladder or quick play. Uh, but in this situation, you should probably be running what is... Uh, mo most optimal. What uh, characters have synergy? Maybe you won't play the meta comp, but play a comp that has synergy. If you're going to run a Winston, uh, commit and run a dive comp. Something and the... that's not a mix of two different styles. Exactly. And the good thing about Overwatch is that you have a lot of bleed over with all these comps. Like, heroes that are similar in role, you can switch off if you have to. Like, if you play dive, you can switch between Winston and D.Va pretty easily because the con the playstyles get tend to be similar. Stuff like that. You have um, similar roles, so what the thing is, you don't want to solely stick to what you're best at, as you're saying, but what you're best at that fits the comp. Yeah, I think Winston should probably have been Zarya. So you still have that damage mm -hmm. potential. Uh, maybe get picks on the supports uh, as they were hoping. Bubble the Bastion. Uh, I think that would have been better. Maybe uh, they weren't a Zarya player, in which case, maybe just play Roadhog. Either that, or at the very least, a Roadhog or a D.Va, I think. Yeah. Because Roadhog for more more Roadhog for more DPS, D.Va for more utility. Also, that being said, Orisa Hog on offense on Eichenwald probably isn't a good idea. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's definitely a defensive-situated composition. Yeah, uh, Arisa it's... Hawk on offense in general, I don't know about that. Because the yeah. only map I've seen them on offense are payload maps, where you're not really... It's more, it's less of an offense or more of a mobile defense, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, I would have liked them to, uh, given that the in-laws were running Ryan Zarya, also have a Ryan Zarya, because that's just so powerful right now. Zarya gets charged just like that nowadays. Uh, there's so much spam going back and forth. I think it was... Uh, a misstep playing the 
weird tanks on offense. So mm. if San Francisco uh, adapts to, uh, and runs something a little bit more standard, whether that be the current meta or maybe even a past meta, as long as the tanks, as long as the tanks and uh, other heroes have synergy, I think they'll be in good spots. I think their yeah. uh, ultimate economy was pretty good. I think they yeah. played pretty well. They just the their hero choice was suboptimal. And as far as dive meta goes, like I know it's dead this season, but there are maps it still works on. Yep. Good example where we're going next. Yep, we are going to Volskaya Industries. Uh, Gibraltar is another very good dive map. Uh, Volskaya, though, I think I would have to disagree with you. I think this is definitely a Rhinezaria map, at least with the first choke hmm. point. I feel like, I don't know. I can definitely see that, but I feel like a good dive, especially if you can take advantage of flanking around mm -hmm. and going around the first choke. I yeah. think a good dive can get to the point and solidify it. I think if at you are focusing first. on verticality, I think you're right. Mm. So maybe that's something we'll see from either team, though I have a feeling that Houston is going to be sticking onto the uh, Death Ball comp as we move yeah, over to Volskaya be... Industries. They have had some great success with it thus far, but we'll see. Yeah, looks like we're gonna... Okay. Team colors are the same so far, yeah? Yep. So... On the Shook, it looks like we are going to see, again, a modified comp. It's mostly Death Ball with a Tracer. Yeah, that does seem to uh, be the case. Oh, wait, we see a switch to Junkrat. Lucio, you know, I kind of like this. I think we're just seeing two Death Balls right now. Yeah, perhaps uh, the advice we gave that I could not hear stuck. As it does look like San Francisco is going to be running uh, Death Ball with a Junkrat, which I honestly agree with. It's pretty good at taking down barriers. Now, it is going yeah. to charge Zarya like nothing else, but if you can take down her bubble and then kill her, maybe that won't be a problem. We should mention we did see some switches. I believe Zero, Empathy, True Love, and Storm Shield did come in for the Shook. Yeah, they're definitely going to be playing different roster, different roles. I definitely appreciate this more standard comp, these triple healers on both sides. Uh, Lucio, uh, instead of uh, Zenyatta on the side of San Francisco, but honestly, that's fine. Especially on well, offense. That <clears throat> gives them the positioning uh, advantage. Yeah, the one thing you got to worry is that since they don't have much verticality, they're going to have to charge through that choke. So it's really going to be a question of who breaks through and who holds fast. Here they come, up to the choke point. But Transcend is already super low. He's taking some shots. He's at 40 health. These grenades and whatnot. Meanwhile, San Francisco is in. Dakarta goes down already. And they're just and the, strong pushing in. The Lucio really did work out for them. Storm Shield oh, is on point. Charges back and forth. Alto Sax goes down. And actually, this is going to be an in laws take as True Love jumps off to uh, reset. And what looked so strongly in favor of the San Francisco is going to be Houston. Surplus got a bunch of picks right at the end there that really helped them hold that point. Yeah, Brigitte is absolutely wild. She already has over half ult. Although speaking about ults, North is at 83% already. There's so much damage coming out of Hanzo. And if we look at this ult economy, um, even after that first push, the in-laws are looking so much better than the Shook. Yeah, there's... Despite the picks that they got, San Francisco just isn't looking as strong right now. And here come the dragons sectioning off uh, the team. But no Looks picks. Like they have... Yep. Fun fact, the only way to counter dragons is to step about three meters to the left. And they did just that. Just walk to the left, lol. But a pick onto the Brigitte. Uh, Sixes has to respawn on Brigitte instead of main tank, which I definitely agree with. Uh, but they are going to have to wait. Meanwhile, North has 40% ult again. I guess you can stand to use dragons like that, uh, eat up time, zoning ult, uh, if you're going to get it back just as fast. But here comes the push, it's oh. on the left side of the choke point, and they're actually going to go back and grab some positioning, though the team is split right now. They are, but they are getting back together. Interesting push, and they're going around the other side. Yep, surplus is low, but the grab is going to capture them all. 
And these storm arrows are just so strong that this, with some cleanup, should be the rest of the uh, San Francisco going down. The Shook have to North go back to the drawing board. North looking like the star Hanzo right now of this match. He's gotten so many picks. And see, the one thing that's limiting Storm Arrow... Oh my god, there he goes two more again! The one thing that's limiting Storm Arrow, you can say, is the aim, but when you've got your entire enemy team trapped in a grav, how well do you really yeah. have to aim? You can hit E and just left-click, left-click, left-click. It's so strong. Now, ults are pretty big on both sides. There's a lot of ultimate yeah. economy to go around. Six is probably looking to use armor uh, preemptively again. Uh, but the dragons oh. are going to kill zero empathy on the way in. Sixes goes down next, and that's no armor for anybody because their ult just got canceled. And we see the rest of the ship trapped in the garage over here. Yep, Mercy's going to go down next. This is only going to be one and like a half more pushes, especially if Reinhardt gets uh, oh. uh, staggered like that. Now we do that have a far up, but already down zero empathy, uh, no longer healing, trying to be the counter meta, but it didn't work out at all. And if you're the Shook right now, you got to wonder, how the hell are we going to combat this Hanzo? Because so far, oh, they've tried a lot, and it's not worked. Well, one thing to notice is that we're still waiting on this first tire. Akane's been Junkrat the whole game, hasn't really accomplished much, and we're that, waiting for him to use ult. That is totally true. I'm surprised he's been holding on to it this long. But here it comes, and this could be the game changer right here. It's going to go over he the hut, going to try and get the Mercy, but it's not going to go up there. Pokey does go, get taken down, but it might be a res, given the fact that Jakarta is using Valkyrie. But actually it looks like uh, the San Francisco are going to be hovering over the body to make sure the res does not come out. Valkyrie is over, and this should be a cap for the San Francisco. Storm Arrow yeah. uh, is here, but it's not getting any more picks. With the Brigitte and the Rhine down, it really does look like things are going the way of the Shook. Well, Trance is out. In-laws do have a chance, but the Valk is going to keep them alive and healthy this time. But Storm Shield goes down. That's no Reinhardt. North getting more picks, and it looks like the uh, in-laws are starting what to get some good What a big shatter. shatter! Not even a single tick, are you kidding me? What a hold. I can't believe they didn't get a tick out of that whole thing. That was such a good feigned retreat. Yeah. I think, oh, that must have been what they did. Because we saw Ryan and we saw Brigitte go there real early. And then you see the rest of the, um, the rest of the in-laws kind of peel away from the point as if they're giving it up. But then you, you contest just enough to let your main tanks and your healer come back. You retake the point. You have Earth Shatter. You stop the push right there. Yeah, Brilliant just... stuff from the in-laws. Uh, biding their time until the rest of their team could get back, and in-laws were able to full hold Volskaya. Only a tick uh, needs to be gained. It's going to be another uphill battle for the San Francisco Shook. So I imagine they'll be running some cheese, but at the moment they're going to be running the pulled pork uh, Rizahog Again. combo. I guess this was counter meta last season it was good against dive but it's not so much good against death ball as tanks can kind of just walk through orisa's barrier i have two questions number one is that an ana yes number two is pokey staying sim i hope <laughs> but yeah i can see the ana working real well because this team is going to take a lot of damage no doubt you have Roadhog, first of all, you have Arisa, you have a lot of decently high health or decent sustained squishies too, with Reaper and Soldier. So if you can get that nano boost charged up quick and you drop it on your Reaper or your Roadhog, we could see it eating away at some of the armor. Yeah, or give it to Akane to have that nano visor just eat away. <laughs> also, fun fact, we have the three damage boosting heroes in the game on this team, so if you focus one hero, <laughs> that they is 130% extra damage. Now, if we could get a Zenyatta in here. <laughs> but here comes the attack. Uh, the Houston in-laws have already seen where the Shook are bunkered down. Oh, but here's a Reaper. Little 1v1. Six is his... He's but... by himself, and he's going to get bashed. Yeah, and the in-laws are just going to force 
the Shook to come to them. They don't have any damage like a Junkrat to make the point unbearable, which means that the Shook have to collapse onto the point. Akane is the first to go down. That's not going to be a visor anytime soon. Heal, Altosax goes down, and this and is already that's just a it. quick take. Zero Empathy at least lived for a little bit longer. Yeah. Honestly, I think it was a good idea. It's just, once again, North went uncontested. The second you got that first pick, it kind of was a domino effect. The in-laws got all the rest of those picks, and there was just no, no way to stop them. And when you only need a tick, and when you're holding mostly off point, what else are you going to do? Yeah, I I get having the Orisa Hog, but you need to have some high DPS like a Bastion or a Junkrat to make sure that that can't happen, that the in-laws can't just stay on the point. Also, I want to clear up a quick thing that I've been talking about with damage boosts, because I, I know that it's a little bit of a misconception in the community. So... Remember that they capped um, damage resistance at 50. Yes. When they did that, a lot of people, I think, got either misinformed or assumed that, like, the damage boost also capped at 50, but that is not the case. I've looked recently and seen research done, and damage boosts themselves stack with no cap, and that's because you the reason they capped the resistance is because if you had, before the cap, nano boost and fortify, that was 100% damage resistance. That's the math and uh that's not a thing you want on a hero at all yeah it was definitely brutal on the ptr when bastion had the 30 yeah. percent. yeah 30 yeah, plus 50 that was an 80 percent damage reduction he yeah. would survive a diva bomb just by existing yeah that was a scary time and we're really thankful they capped the resistance but the damage boosts they do stack which is why you might see the stacking like we've seen from san fran of the supercharger and the damage boost from the mercy ult Looks like we're getting a, a, a little bit of a shakeup in the teams right now. We are going to switch sides, so San Fran will be the blue and Houston will be the red. Yep, meanwhile we are going to be going to a King of the Hill. So, again, San Francisco uh, a little bit behind. They were so close to making some progress on the point A of Sky, but they just weren't able to uh, finish off that tick. What do you think and they I should don't have even, done? Well, I don't really even discredit uh, Sanford at that point. I just kind of want to highlight how how well Houston's kind of, uh, like you said, the whole feigning re a retreat play worked out. But I think the bigger thing is that they did have a Lucio, if I remember correctly. So the fact that they weren't really getting their picks and they were allowing Houston to even retreat as they did is kind of what sealed the deal for them. Yeah, with a Lucio and with Death Ball, I think you're right. What that composition should have done is grouped up with the Lucio uh, and targeted one person and then just, like a death ball, roll him over. The big and thing I think must the have been... other thing... <clears throat> oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the big thing must have just been uh, target calling and prioritization. There may be uh, two cluttered comms on San Francisco side to really finish off one target in particular. Not to mention, I think there's another thing that went into that is that when you are in overtime, you can be really hesitant to leave the point. Or when you're even running out of time, you can be real hesitant to leave the point. And I think what happened is that Houston, um, San Fran did not want to leave that point to chase Houston as they retreated. And that letting the rest of Houston get away like that is kind of what prevented them from getting the, the, cap, the, ta the cap, or at least a tick. Yeah, if uh, San Francisco had left one uh, or two people on the point while the rest chased and got those staggers, they would have had a much better chance of finishing off that tick and maybe even point A. Exactly. So it, it's it's a mix of both um, feeling like you're chained to the point in overtime and also, like you said, maybe some questions about target calling or target prioritization. Now, well, that's not to discredit how well Houston did with that whole strategy, too. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, were very good at biding their time and waiting uh, for mm -hmm. that regroup. And as far as the Houston defense, I really th or the San Fran defense, I really think it was just a matter of uh, playing a good defensive comp, but, but you played a defensive comp that relies on n having a, p a full point to defend, not a third of a point. And also, it relies on having the damage. Reaper is a close-range damage, so he's not going to be able to play with Ariza Hog when they're on the high ground, and Soldier doesn't do enough to really uh, do that by himself. I really think Reaper should have been a Junkrat so that you can spam the point with the grenades and make it impossible for the Houston in-laws to just chill on that point. 
Yeah, Junkrat would have helped too, and that would have also combated some of the armor. We didn't see much of it. I mean, without Rally, Brigitte can still give a good 75 armor boost to any hero that she chooses, so... But a single Junkrat bomb will take that entire thing away. Yep, now we are going to be going to Nepal. This is going to be a chance for San Francisco to start bringing this back. This is going to be even footing on both sides. There's no defensive advantage. This is down to coordination, positioning, and mechanical skill. So maybe San Francisco can start maybe a comeback. Maybe at least get a round, I think is what I would like to see from them. Mm-hmm. Now we are waiting for the rest of Houston's players to show up. So at some point, this game will get on the road. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break.
And we're back. Looks like we're going to get into Nepal for the third match. Yep, we are heading over to the beautiful land of Nepal. I think we'll see a lot of good <laughs> boops galore. Got some snow-covered mountains, got a trace of Nomura. What else can you need? And this is actually a time where Orisa Hog is going to be good, at least on the Sanctum map. So maybe this is what uh, San Francisco Shook need. It could be. It very well could be. That being said, we are going to be starting on the village. So what kind of comps do you think we'll see here? Death Ball really does work well here, I think. Um, it works well on a lot of maps, but especially here where there's not a lot of sight lines um, for long range heroes, when you have the um, team stick together, it can go really well. Yeah, there is some high ground, uh, but there's also yeah. a lot of close range fighting on the point. Yeah, that's the thing, because the high ground here really does not have a good vantage point onto the point. There's a couple angles from like where the bottom hallways end up that you can shoot on the point, but this really does work well with Death Ball, I think. Hey, and quick question, what season is it? Season? Yeah, because, uh, seems like we're running a dive from Houston. You know what, you're right, and <laughs> honestly, I applaud that. I think if they can pull this off, it'll work really well. Especially since, for some reason, um, San Fran doesn't seem to be running Brigitte. Yeah, they're running... Uh, Tracer May. Now, May is very good on this point. Maybe they're running her in the off-tank role instead of Brigitte, but does that mean... I mean, that does mean they don't have the anti-dive capability. So, Houston right. is going to be unchecked with this dive comp, yeah, uh, at least as far really... as hard counters go. This could be a really good read from Houston, honestly. Oh, no, oh, but... Um, that wall coming up. That is gonna trap Apple. That's gonna lead to an early lead, but Akane goes down. She is gonna get rezzed back up. Admiral dives in to get that kill, but he finds himself in a bad position right there. The entirety of the Shook are on the point. Oh, but a nice dash from Admiral. And now this is going to be going back and forth. It's really, it's hard to tell who's in the lead yeah. right now. Storm We're Shield swinging around. Flight. I guess taken down, almost had ult too. That would have been a really good time to shatter, but eventually Houston is going to take the lead and is going to cap the yeah. point. They're going to res that Lucio, and honestly, not a bad fight. Um, we had some really good alt economy built up from Houston, too. We have two alts live, both are DPS alts. Yeah, meanwhile, Storm Shield is coming up with that Earth Shatter. It could be um, a game changer. We're also very close to Coalescence on Servia. So having support alts in this fight is going to be enormous with those two DPS alts getting ready. Oh, but Pulse Bomb somehow got Dread! And now with the Blade, that's another couple picks. As long as... Yeah, as long as San Francisco didn't invest anything, uh, that's not a terrible run. But what a clean fight from Houston. Mm -hmm. Only and used Houston their did... DPS ults. Which is good, because your DPS are going to build them up pretty fast. We are going to see a, um, a Valkyrie up soon for Houston, and we're going to see a Primal Rage up soon for um, Houston. Although, alt economy-wise, the Shook look like they're going to have almost all of theirs live. They're so going to have a lot. Be... They aren't going to have Grab, and they aren't going to have Valk, but they're going to have four ults to work with, and Shatter is going to get an entire Lucio, who he is, is going to go down. Valk is trying to keep everyone of the in-laws alive, though. Coalescence is out. San Francisco needs to start taking this fight to the point so that they can cap. Storm Shield was taken down by a Primal Rage, and now in-laws is going to try and push onto the point and stop this take. Merce, uh, May ult is out, and that's actually going to give them the space that they need. It Pulse is, but are they going to be able but... to hold it? Yeah, the picks are all from Houston. It's only going to give them about 12%. Houston's going to retake. Some stalling is going to come out. Yeah. yeah, counting on individual players right here. North, very capable DPS in general. We just saw some crazy tracer picks coming out from him. Yep, no longer on the projectile, now on a kind of pseudo hit scan. And I've got to say one thing about that Shook offense. I'm kind of confused as to why they dropped both their support ults. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell, but they do have uh, Dread with the Valkyrie. Oh, and Admiral's oh not going to play today. Earth Shatter comes out as well. This one's huge. Storm Shield's really finding uh, good hits here and there. The problem, though, is that Transcend got a res onto Genji for free. Now Apple North did get charged, pick. but it ran out, so he is going to keep most of his health. And this has to be make or break. 
Houston is going to try and hold on to this squishy robot, gets two picks, and now there's a bunch of squishy health on the point. Houston's going to pick up. Coalescence can't keep you alive that long, Moira. And, and 99 to 19. It. Yeah, I think the Shook had some opportunity, but I really think it came down to how you're using your ults. And not just that, but the DPS from Houston went in that match. Yeah, Tricks, they, uh, picks left and right by Admiral and North. They did very well. But here is the map that I was talking about. This is where you can run Orisa Hog. Is that what we're going to see? Well, we have a Hog. And we do see a Brigitte. Servia now on the Mercy. And there we go. there's Orisa. I think if their DPS switched, this would be a very solid composition for them. The problem is that their DPS don't have anything uh, synergistic with their tanks. But here we go, Akane now on the Soldier, and Zero Empathy on Tracer. That's fine as long as uh, in-laws don't run any anti-dive. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually going to be a like... from both teams. And it looks like we're not going to see an anti-dive coming out. Oh, big pick on the beginning of that Arisa. They're not going to be able to stabilize the point without that. Yeah, with that damage boost, North already has a third of his ult. That is 34%. And just pretty uncontested right now. Zero Empathy is in the back, but has to fight both North and a Hog and everyone else on the team. Houston's going to get this easy cap and a nice damage boosted body shot to finish off that Tracer. Meanwhile, Houston what, can now push back into uh, the Shook. What won Houston that point was that pick by North at the beginning, because you had the waste of time to get Orisa back up while the other Orisa just situated herself and her shield directly on that point. Yeah, not only did you have to resurrect Orisa, but that's time where the barrier's not up, and with a damage-boosted Widowmaker, that's not really something you can afford to have a problem with. Definitely not. I like Zero this play empathy. from Dread peeking. Does get some almost hits. get a pulse bomb. But this fight is still happening. North, another damage boosted body shot. And th unfortunately, the Shook just haven't been able to fight on the point. No, not at all. And we're just seeing some crazy picks coming out. Admiral and North. Oh, nice skeet shooting. Storm Shield gets booped up and finished off by North. Another boop. True Love is going to go into I, the pit. I kind of love, love that the Lucio named Kosher Bacon killed the Roadhog. <laughs> Say bacon one more time. Oh, and a good hook and, onto Zero Empathy. That's going to go uh, Houston's way again. They're holding so far forward because they yeah. know they can afford it. I kind of want to call this cocky, but it's working out. And with the Junkrat, the Arisa Barrier, the damage boosted Widow, how do you even get in on this? The problem is, you don't. Especially when a tire finishes off Storm Shield. There's just really not much that uh, the Shook can do, aside from get a full reset, probably maybe go Death Ball to try and break this, as and Dive hey, is not working. Let's look at that percent right now. We are almost at 90, and Houston, sh the Shook, are nowhere near the point. Yeah, Actually, this is the last Hold chance. on now. Zero has made his way around. He's forcing the rest of the um, Houston to pivot. But unfortunately, Dread got yanked off, and now it's just a couple tanks from San Francisco have to survive Supercharger, all this damage and doesn't they look can't. like. The flank was too little, too late, and it looks like this is probably just going to be a clean victory for Houston. Yep, just some pickup. Akane goes down again. Thread is here with armor. Is going to contest Last for a little second. bit longer. Oh, boop! And Hulk does survive both, but can't survive a tire. Now it's zero empathy's turn. They're starting so this pretty well, ult. honestly. Here come the barriers, but now Zero Empathy, as soon as the barriers run out, does have Blade, but immediately gets dealt with by Admiral. Storm Shield is going to have oh. soon, but wasn't on the point soon enough! And that's exactly. currently 3-0 for the Houston in-laws. Admiral is going to get play of the game. Jack of all trades the DPS on the in-laws. Really good play yeah. on a lot of different DPS. This this DPS duo of in-laws and North seems to be really good because I see I see a lot of good picks from uh, Admiral, sorry, Admiral and North because I see a lot of good projectile DPS play from Admiral and then we see a lot of good hit scan from North, the Widow, the Tracer. Not to mention we know that North has that Hanzo. So yeah, it's definitely doesn't seem to be 
a, a hit scan focus or a projectile focus. North just seems to be really good at any DPS. Mm -hmm. Or at least I the mean, standard DPS. I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see North using a Doomfist. Oh, I'd love to. But, like, I don't know how well... What's the word here? How well we're going to... Um, how close Hanzo is to true projectile, because he is projectile-based, but the arrow speed increase with the latest patch does make him closer to hit scan at close ranges. Yeah, it does make him uh, much deadlier, much faster. The arrows are... About as fast as Ana's darts, which honestly might as well be hit scan. They're not instant, but they're very fast. Yeah, I need honestly, as a casual Hanzo player myself, I need to test out the thing because I still haven't gotten used to it. It's such a big adjustment. Yeah, and so then props you have to North. Storm Arrow. Yeah, I've I've honestly personally seen more success flicking Storm Arrow than just holding down the button. Yeah, it's definitely it's like Zenyatta Fire where you should be, instead of holding down the button, really taking the time to aim and click each shot, which is why North, with one Storm Arrow, gets three final blows. He's mm -hmm. not holding down and spraying Storm Arrows. Every arrow is calculated, and that's what uh, makes it so effective. Exactly. So we are going to be going over to Route 66 for this last map. San Francisco, this is their last chance to make a comeback, make a name for themselves. And 66 is a pretty good place to do it. There's uh, a lot of good choke points. It's a payload, so it's easier to start your attack than it is uh, on a 2CP. So this, I think, also, is San Francisco's best bet. Also, San Francisco seems, seems to really, really like playing that Orisa Hog tank composition. I wonder if that's a comfort pick for them. If there was one map that, that was going to work really well on, aside from that one point on the pall, this is the one. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, on top of big Earl's. Uh, for that defense, it's also good on a payload, where you can uh, really just bunker down. Right. Because the thing about payload is that it's it's less... I think I said this earlier, but it's less of a direct offense and more of a moving defense. So you have to de de defend a moving objective as you move through the map. Yeah, and Risa to... Hog, especially with good DPS, can do that really well. Yeah, similarly to how Bastion on attack is kind of a viable option on a payload, uh, so is in the same sense an Orisa Hog, where mm, it's and... typically defensive, but you can make it so that the attack has to attack you in order to stop the push. Exactly. And with the mention of that Bastion, I've got to ask, what are the odds we see a modified pirate ship or pure pirate ship on this map? I think pirate ship is slightly likely. I think defensive Bastion is going to be more likely, at least from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I think if they run uh, Orisa Hog Bastion, that might be something that works out, especially if Houston runs the Death Ball composition that is meta right now. We are seeing some more switches coming in from San Fran. Um, so far we have Mini Ninja in, Dread in, I believe. No, Dread was already in. Mini Ninja in, and Kawaii Street in. Yeah, so many... Uh, gotta shake up some things. San Francisco waiting on their sixth player. And then we'll go on to Route 66. Come get your kicks. Sorry, I don't know if we're <laughs> nah, gonna get content ID for shit like that. Oh, yeah, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't yeah, sing can't. songs because YouTube nope, will actually nope. strike you for that. Yeah. I think Putting it's okay on Twitch. Words. It's probably okay on Twitch. Twitch is the Wild West where you can do anything except show cleavage. Because <laughs> that's yeah. illegal. Too bad we won't be doing that on this stream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe once we get your camera feed in, maybe that's when we'll oh. get struck by a Twitch. <laughs> but while we wait for the sixth player, we are going to, again, go to a short break.
And we're back and ready to go into game four. This is San Francisco's last chance, or Houston's chance, to get a 4-0 and start the seeding off great going into stage two. What's that thing that the commentators do? Rawhide? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a soundboard, so I won't be able to... Like, whoosh, whoosh. Mm, maybe in the future. Yep, rawhide, rawhide. Nah, nothing. I'll have to get into contact with a... Uh, Similar in Hex. Yeah. We see North on the Torbjorn, and honestly, with the way he's been playing DPS, I don't entirely discount it. Yeah, Torbjorn can actually be pretty scary. We've, we, um, for those who follow the Overwatch League, we've even seen Torbjorn played on the professional stage for about half a map, so... Yeah, he or... Can get, he can be scary. A whole stage. For a whole half a payload move. For a whole 20 meters. Alright, Houston is ready. They are going to be running this Death Ball comp, Transcend. Oh, how I wish I could believe you, but you've wronged me so many times. Nah, he's switching off. Especially with Apple doing this. Right now, um, Houston's comp is looking a lot like my normal quick play comps. <laughs> Meanwhile, San Francisco is running... Uh, another mixed comp. This is kind of what you were saying. If they were gonna mix comps, have a diva with this Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. they yeah, have... diva Ryan can. I think diva Ryan can work defensively if the diva plays defensively. Yeah, this is uh, really a kind of an even split of comps. They have uh, Ryan Soldier Mercy for the you know stalwart defense, and then they have Diva Genji Zenyatta for the dive. It's pretty interesting, and hopefully it works out for them. It could work, because I think if we see um, we see Zen and Diva play more reserved and stick with the rest of their team, and we see uh, Mini Ninja going in and getting picks as Genji and getting out successfully, you could definitely see it uh, getting some traction. Although, against the, this death ball with a Genji that um, Houston's running, I don't know. Yep, here comes the attack, though. And oh. Red goes down already to a headshot! That's big! That's a lot of healing lost. And a Fire Strike is going to get both tanks. San Francisco needs to start making something happen, and Mini Ninja is going to try and start that. He's going to try and take down Jin. Altosax gets the kill, but Koistri and Spooky Soup went down. Rez is going to come out and bring Jin back as if it never happened. And now Mini Ninja needs to get away. Good reflect, but he needs to back up and wait for his team. Now he needs to do the one retreating. Yeah. Now he does get healed by his Mercy, but that just gave away Mercy's positioning. And now she's going to have say, to get pushed back. It should try to collapse on this point, but just the solid death ball is working out really well. And the only way to counter death ball, I think, is another death ball. Yeah, the San Francisco Shook just need to get on the point. They need to commit, but they are kind of scared to. And now North at 11 health is going to get the blade out, get Spooky Soup looking for more, finishes off a tank, getting Tracer. He started that less than a melee away, and he got three picks. Cleanup is Altos coming in, Altosax out of mech, going to be finished off. Trying your best, but it's not going to be enough, and that is actually a really quick first point take for Houston. Yeah, five minutes going into the second phase is not something you see often. And already the defense is split from San Francisco. Yeah. Kawhi Street's caught Kawhi out Street. in the middle. He's so out of position right now. All he has is a Zenyatta orb right now. I wish that San Francisco, if they were going to play the way they are, have a Moira for that extra healing. But Kawhi Street does have Earth Shatter, and he might be looking to use it soon. The problem, though, is that there's the Brigitte that can cancel his ult as soon as he picks the hammer up. And stun oh. into Earth Shatter. Apple's going to get that, and Mini Ninja's going to be taken down immediately. Now it's Jin's turn to have fun with this uh, Storm Arrow as North is yeah, on the look, Genji. Look at all these picks. Who thought Shimada Brothers would ever be, like, a solid meta? But they are. Yeah, Genji like, less Shimada so now. Brothers. But both of them are very good in their own rights. Mm -hmm. I think with Dragonblade being how it is, it's hard to see Genji ever falling off of being picked, even slightly. And now here's Shatter, oh. but it got blocked entirely. A stun comes out. North goes down to Altusax's bomb. Some but... phenomenal rhyme player there by Apple. Absolutely. And now Squishy Robot swinging around. Got a rally at the ready. It's unclear if they're going to win this fight. They are going to commit now. Both support ults are out. Dread goes down to a Dragon Blade, and now it's just Spooky Soup. Poor oh, Zenyatta. I don't know how I feel about that. Spooky Soup 
got the chance to stay alive, but he didn't retreat to his team. He stayed on the point. I think he should have used that speed to get out and get back while he was invincible. Unfortunately, it was just him alone on the point. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that punch noise? Oh, oh baby. We've got a doom fist. Minion is just jumping back and forth. Uh, Grab did get eaten by Alter Sax, go. so that's, that's exactly what you wanted. Value. Unfortunately, Alter Sax is now out of mech, and there's nothing to eat these dragons, which are going to split off the team. Poor Mini Ninja ended up going through the dragons, and now Apple, uh, with the rest of his team, is just going to keep pushing forward. They don't have any ults, but Blade or, uh, Earth Shatter is up soon, and the only thing blade. that Shook have is uh, Trent, or, uh, Valkyrie. And this payload is barely being stopped at all. Looks like the deadlock gain are going to get this new. Is this a bomb? I think it's a bomb. But it is four minutes left. They have to hold here if they really want a chance. Minimum. I mean, a mini ninja gets taken down. Earth Shatter. This should be the final fight if it keeps going Houston's way. Kawhi Street goes and down even to. during Valk. Look Dread's at all these picks from best. Apple. Dread in the uh, breast cancer awareness. But that's not stopping San Francisco Shook from dying. Oh, risky res. Altusax does get brought up for a little bit more stalling, but Apple just swing in the hammer. Actually, we see a lot of reinforcements coming in from the Shook, and this might actually be a defense after all. That being said, North, Blade, already took Spooky Soup, now Kawaii Street. This is actually, after some reinforcements back and forth, a very quick take from Houston. For mercy. Yeah. That's just I weird. think, honestly, it, it was kind of lost at that point, the fact that Houston had gotten it that far in that little time. And what you saw coming from the Shook was just, how can we buy ourselves as much time as possible? And they tried. They really did. We had Mini Ninja on the Doomfist, who can get back into fight super quick. We had um, the Moira finally come out for some extra healing. It looked like things might have been going their way, but the North popped that blade. And that was all she wrote. Though if they wanted to go for stall compositions, they should have run a May. Or they really should have, yeah. They didn't really commit to that. They're... The problem with San Francisco, aside from their communication and their targeting, seems to be their weird comps and never really switching when they need to or uh, fully committing to one certain kind of composition. Honestly, I don't even know if the comms are as big of a deal as just the picks. Because... Let's look at how many different team comps that um, San Fran has played. We've seen them play everything from dive to death ball and everything in between. Meanwhile, we only saw the, the in-laws pull out dive once and they committed the whole fight and they won that fight. So I really think it's a matter of playing the right comps and right now San Fran is being incredibly experimental and it's just not been working out. Yeah, experimental or just playing comfort picks that don't really mesh well. Mm -hmm. We are going to see an attack bastion from Mini Ninja, though. I think this is going to stay uh, with the rest of Deathfall. Zero Empathy on the Widowmaker. They're looking to have a lot of damage on the payload while Zero Empathy tries to get some picks all around. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Bastion with Ryan and Zarya. I feel like you might want Arisa Hog here, which is like the comfort picks for, um, for the, the Shook. Shook. Which is interesting, because I mentioned that before, but we don't see either of those tanks in either situation where they would be useful. Oh, Jin's got to get out of there right now. That You do not want to try and contest a Bastion with a Ryan in front of him as Hanza. There is a Widow duel. That Zero Empathy is losing. North gets that damage boosted headshot. And Kawaii Street's shield is, is going down. How do you shot? How do you stop this? Because you can't. You need to be very careful peeking. Oh, <laughs> not like that. Apple gets obliterated, but Mini Ninja goes down to Admiral. Dread goes down next. Even fight, though. If uh, the picks can keep going back and forth, unfortunately, they are going to be Houston favored. Spooky Soup goes Look down at next. All this. Look at all this value that North brought. Um, we saw the pick on the Mercy really early, which prevented Bastion from getting res and prevented him from moving that any further. And now they probably can't run the Bastion, because how do you get him set up on that point? Yeah, you have to have the space in order to do that, and they don't have that anymore, which is why Mini Ninja is going to go onto the Soldier, but Zero Empathy lost to the Widow battle and went Junkrat. That's not going to help fight a Widow or a Hanzo. I no. don't think this is 
the correct I think response. I, Mini Ninja's going Doomfist. I don't know if I like that. I actually... I really like Doomfist, and I really want to see Doomfist played more, but without any support, I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, it's and... going to work like that. <laughs> yeah. It does seem Doom... that San Francisco is just trying to throw comps and heroes out the wall, see what sticks. They've lost the now, series. They just want to, like you said, experiment. I believe Mini Ninja is a good Doomfist, and I think the issue is that he's playing Doomfist into a Brigitte. Yeah, the Brigitte just shuts down really any dive aspect. So yeah. that's not really going to be an option, which is why he's most likely going to not be switching. Mm. Meanwhile, this is kind of... It's mean to say, but this is target practice for North more than anything else. It kind of is at this point. Going against Do a Doomfist and a Junkrat, there's no contention. And I hate to say it, I'm just so surprised at how Double Sniper is winning! <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the tire. Maybe Zero Empathy can find something with it. It could be good. It needs to be good, but it's gonna get sniped. Mm, skeet shooting. Our Shatter does come out, though. Admiral does go down. But a bigger Shatter comes out. Although he misses the charge! He does. Admiral does get res back up, though. Trent's end goes down. Here's some dragons. Dredda trying to take out Apple by himself. This, perhaps due to hubris, is the best chance that San Francisco has, but they're still losing players. Yeah, Kawhi, I think that might have been a focus issue. We saw Kawhi Street trying to combat Apple with his mercy. Meanwhile, the rest of his team got mopped up. I'm gonna wonder if Balderic was right. Where is Reinhardt? And right now we have 48 seconds, and this looks like a very hard hill to climb if you are the Shook. If you're the Shook, I'd imagine you're feeling pretty Shook right now. Oh, good but pick that's for a good start. If Mercy had died during that res, that would have been a very good chance for the Shook to try and bring this back. But, oh, North goes down again. Mini Ninja with some really good picks. Oh, this but a Shatter. Died. Dread goes down, Apple swinging away. Spooky Spook goes down next, and Payload's always winnable, but it doesn't seem to be the case right now. No. Well, Although, two picks. I don't know about that. If Jin goes down, I would say that this is definitely possible. Admiral's getting forced back, but there's no oh, healing. No. And Jin, if if Zero Empathy was... had finished Jin off, this could have been. San Francisco's chance to shine, but unfortunately, Jin outplayed the Genji. And he that's outplayed that four. entire team. This is going to be Jin's play of the game right here. Almost certain. Yep. Yes. At the end, he got five picks to stop him getting on that payload. And here's the Dragon Strike. There's another pick during the Shatter. I didn't even realize Dread went down next. And this is just absolutely devastating. Brutal. We have some really good Hanzas on the side of the Imlaws too. I think that's the one thing that's setting them aside. But overall, if I can say one thing, it's that the in-law, it's, it's not even really a matter of skill, because I don't really want to talk about individual player skill. We have the in-laws sticking to static comps that work, and we have the Shook throwing comps at the wall, and none of them really sticking. The fourth game, I think we can give them a little leeway. They didn't think that they were going to win, so... Yeah, uh, that's fair. They were throwing around different DPS, uh, just trying to figure out what might counter that kind of composition in the future. But obviously, I agree with you. I think they should have run more standard comps, which, again, is the theme of the Overwatch Community Cup uh, when it comes to these teams that... It's the theme Aren't... of Overwatch, com like competitive Overwatch in general. Absolutely. If you run what works, it works. Yeah, so when you're running a comfort pick, even though you're more comfortable on that pick, it's not really going to be as viable as you would like, especially when it's something like a Ryan Winston that has almost negative synergy. I also want to say something about Mini Ninja in that last match. We saw that he was on several different DPS heroes, and he didn't ever get much traction until... In the last 30 seconds, he switches to Widow and gets about four picks. Yeah. So you kind of got to wonder. <laughs> Most of them if they on the on... enemy Widow. Well, yes, but Which he also got the good. Brigitte. And yeah, he got the enemy Widow. He got the Brigitte. You got to wonder if they had put him on the um, offensive on that Widow from the start, would they have gotten some progress? Maybe they might have taken that map. Who knows? 
Yep, so you I... need to contest. It's it's like we see this in even pro play. You need to um, – when you have – Pro widows that are holding down your enemy team. If you can contest those widows on payload maps, especially on 66, where the sight lines are huge, you can actually turn things around. Like it's that central around how well the widow is getting picks. So as we bring this to a close, and as San Francisco goes back to the drawing board, the main things that they need to work on are standard compositions. Pick one. Don't mix them around. If you're going to run dive, <laughs> run dive. If you're going to run death ball, run death ball. Uh, just run compositions that work, uh, even if they're not compositions that you're used to. Just look at what is optimal at the time and try and work on that so that you get used to those kind of compositions as opposed to uh, individual skill on your favorite heroes. Uh, otherwise, comms need to be cleared up, targeting needs to be focused. That was another big issue that they need to work on. Uh, otherwise, good job and to both teams, and good job to Houston mm -hmm. for getting a 4-0. Yeah, if there's one criticism I can say about Houston, and there's not really much to criticize, it's that I wonder how strong their supports are. Because I think if there was one role that didn't quite shine in this whole thing, it might have been the supports. Because you had the DPS stand outstanding. You had outstanding tank play as well. But even then, maybe it's just that the supports didn't need to shine because yeah. of how well the other two roles played. Um I do want to say that um, one thing I really like about the in-laws is how they have three or four players that can rotate around really good DPS roles and they seem to have really good synergy with the, with themselves as well. Yeah, they. So, we saw three different Hanzos on the in-laws. Yeah, I believe we saw Jin. We saw... Um, North. North, of course. And, and at I least think another. maybe even... Admiral might have been on Genji. I think he might have been on Hanzo at some point. But it really reminds me of an Overwatch League match where we had the New York XL bring out three different Widows during the <laughs> Cup Finals. And each individual Widow was um, giving immense value for the team. So overall, I think the Inlands are in a good spot. And I think the only advice I can give them is, like, even against the lower-ranked like the lower ranked teams, don't get too cocky. Mm -hmm. Play more patient. Because we saw them with a really risky hold on Nepal, and it ended up working out because of how San Fran was attacking, but still, holding up that far can be very dangerous. Yep. So, that being said, we know what both teams need to work on, and we are going to sign off. We will see you whenever we see you next. Yep, and expect more casting. Yep, throughout see you soon. the summer. See ya.